Hey, hello, this is Sean Halsman, paramedic education guy. Uh, I've got a real quick video for anybody who's interested here looking at a couple of films from the air tracks. There is a common theme of uh, a few mistakes that I think uh, providers are making while they're using the device and it's causing some issues. So I wanted to take a look at, uh, again, proper technique for using this device because it is a little different from your standard intubation technique and show you a, a couple of videos that show what happens if you are using better techniques when you're doing this. So uh, we'll take a look at a couple of these videos and uh, hopefully this helps you out. If anything, it's good to see different anatomies on different airways and I believe that's one of the really good points of the air track is that we have the capacity now to take a look at recordings of just different airways so you can see that uh, the anatomy looks different on a lot of people. It's not just looking at the mannequin like we do in class. So uh, here are the videos and uh, enjoy. So we're going to start off here with a uh, two-frame video here so you can uh, take a look at an actual intubation of the mannequin. I'm doing this because I want you to understand the importance of suction. Uh, you really should have a suction catheter in your right hand anytime you do an intubation. And with these air tracks, it's extremely important to have suction, and you'll see in a second. So uh, what I'm doing here is I'm uh, putting the suction through, and this is kind of a modified salad technique. Obviously, there's nothing in this airway, but you're going to suction out the airway, have that available, and then you're going to place the uh, suction catheter right into the esophagus in case anything else comes up. But it's just going to keep your, your opening clear. Now, as the video progresses, uh, a lot of people are getting in very deep with the scope and they're getting a really good view of the cords. So you can see the cords are, are really open there and you get a close up view and it looks wonderful. However, when you're this close to the cords, uh, what you'll find is that any attempt to push the tube in is gonna go into the esophagus. So you need to pull the whole scope back out in order to get a better approach uh, and view on this. So I'm gonna pull the scope out a little bit here and you'll see that the cords get smaller in the view and I'm going backwards and I'm lifting straight up. And when you have that view of smaller cords, this usually lines up your tube perfectly. So suctioning is always important in any kind of airway control situation, and especially if you're doing an advanced airway, but the problem with the air track and not suctioning is, as you can see, a little bit of fluid obscures most of your view. And especially if you get that camera into the fluid or emesis, as you see now, you get a blurred view on the screen, you get some of the emesis on the actual camera, uh, it decreases your ability to see landmarks. Uh, this provider right now is attempting to get the tube, and you'll see that it keeps going underneath the retinoid notch and uh, hitting the esophagus and this is really just a it's a bad placement of the scope and uh, it's a poor view so the uh, provider's not having any luck getting this so he or she is going to uh, pull the tube out and uh, go for a second attempt which is going to be the next video you see so here's attempt number two. Uh, you're going to see suction get introduced here and the fluid levels obviously drop, which is good and is going to give for a much better view. Uh, the provider's still a little bit too far in, so you're seeing the tube uh, hitting the esophagus there. And in just a second, you're going to see the uh, paramedic or whoever's intubating uh, make a little bit of adjustment and lift the scope up and it's going to drop the cores right into perfect place and they're going to get the tube. So the repositioning right there is going to allow you to get in and just remember that uh, you want to be a little farther back from the cords. Uh, this is another attempt on a different patient and you're again going to see a positioning issue and you're also going to see the importance of suction. Look at all the stuff in there. Uh, this bubbly stuff, it could be, you know, frothy pulmonary edema. This could just be saliva, but either way, it's definitely prohibiting you from seeing clearly uh, and then what you're going to find is that this big bubble gets in the way at some point. So suction would have helped tremendously here. And then the actual anatomy is weird. It's the way up on the left there is where the cords are. So the provider has to reposition, which is great. And uh, he or she centers this. But look how far up the opening is on the screen. You're still going to be hitting the esophagus when you push that tube through because we really need to have those cords in the center of the view in order for the scope to work properly. So uh, this is going to end up being a failed attempt after uh, several times uh, just because we can't get the tube to go where we want it to. And it's so frustrating because you're seeing a beautiful view of the cords, but you can't get it to go where you need to go. Here's another attempt and uh, common theme here. You just looking at this, you need to have suction here. 
these bubbles are causing such an issue with your visualization of any landmarks there. I mean, then we finally get a view of the glottic opening, but again, we're in deep enough and the cords are way to the top of the screen that we can't get the tube to pass. It, it keeps going into the esophagus. So you're going to have to get used to that positioning. And uh, again, you know, stop and practice this anytime we, we got the training scopes available uh, and we can do this at any point but uh, it's gonna it's gonna decrease your frustration and it's gonna help you get these tubes on on a first placement i mean we have this excellent tool and if, if we're going to use it uh, getting the muscle memory built in to your regime is really what needs to happen uh, to be successful with these Here's a second attempt on this patient, and uh, you know it, they always say you're only supposed to try two intubations, and, and part of the reason for that is what you're going to see right here. I mean, this is a second attempt. Uh, there's been a tube attempted to advance a couple of times, but the throat has such sensitive tissues uh, that as soon as you start poking around there, you're going to get bleeding, you're going to get uh, some redness, and it's, it's really going to start to be traumatic for uh, the tissues in there, and if we do too much of this, you, you know, you're making it so that it's going to be difficult for even an anesthesiologist to uh, get this or the ER doc at the hospital. Uh, again, suction would really be helpful here. Uh, the positioning of the scope is just such that the, uh, the, the, the cords are still too high on the screen, not able to visualize. So this could be an anatomy problem on this patient if they're very, very, very anterior, but uh, you know, getting the cords in the center of the screen is what really needs to happen. Otherwise, we're going to be unsuccessful in these attempts. Real quick one here, look how frustrating this is. It's a beautiful view of the cords. It's like seeing the donut under glass and you just can't touch it. Uh, so get back away from those cords. Good God, what is that big white thing blocking part of my view? It's the tube. So yeah, if you're not comfortable with the scope and you haven't used it a lot, uh, some people will be pushing the tube in way past where it's supposed to be and then it actually will sit in front of your view. I'll show you a picture of this in a second. Uh, so this provider was still able to get a good view of the cores, but there have been uh, attempts where we were not able to see the cores because the tube was actually in the way. Here's a properly loaded tube, and notice it stops right at the end of the scope. So you don't want this to go past the track at the very end of the scope. If you do, you'll have problems with your view. Here's a tube that has been uh, placed in incorrectly. It's sticking out past the edge of the track. And when you see this from a head-on view, what you quickly see is that half your screen is blocked by the view of that tube. So make sure your tube is not put in too far before you go in for your attempt. Last but not least, we see again the need for suctioning on this one, but otherwise a good placement of the camera. And once the view is corrected and we can see the cords, uh, they're placed perfectly in the center of the screen, uh, and this becomes a very easy intubation. So it uh, restores your faith in humanity, and, and there we go. Overall, ladies and gentlemen, uh, these have been really positive. The videos we've been looking at from these intubation times have been good, and uh, most people are pretty comfortable with this. If you're not comfortable, it's not anything to be ashamed of, but please come and work with this piece of equipment. Uh, for those of you who like to do standard intubations, that's fine if you're happy with that. Uh, but if you want to get better at this device, it really is just some repetition, and uh, a lot of it can be done just on the mannequin. So feel free to give me a shout. Uh, stop by any time. We can work on suctioning, placements, uh, techniques, whatever, uh, to help make you feel a little more comfortable with the AirTrack device. Uh, thank you very much for watching this, and be safe out there.